Hello everybody and welcome to this 10th edition of the workshop on nature-based solution for aeronautics and space application. Remember 2020, our societies has been going through the COVID-19 crisis. This was a major crisis, a simple coronavirus deeply shook our civilization and the whole systems almost collapsed. Fortunately, we were able to identify the reasons of these weaknesses and adapt intelligently. Remember, we were on the cutting edge of the abyss where we risked to cross tipping points and transform our planet into a hell such as Venus. Yeah, Venus, our twin sister planet, was a perfect example of what a hot stove planet is. Uh, Venus is a hell where no life form seems to be able to survive and we were running like headless chicken to this hell. Hopefully, COVID-19 was an obligation to stop and start thinking. Economically, the situation was already tense and the emergence of this virus had further exacerbated the difficulties at all levels. At the social level, the tension has been exacerbated to such an extent that we were witnessing re-emergence of ideas we believed outdated. At the environmental level, we were going through moments of major crisis. We were witnessing the sixth mass extinction. We had lost nearly 70% of biodiversity and all living organisms may be considered like a book full of knowledge and potential innovation. And it was if we had burned, like if we had burned 70% of the bookstore available to us. And at the climatic level, let's, uh, well, I have already discussed this point, Venus. Remember, this simple virus had given us a masterful lesson. This temporary crisis forced us to open our eyes and realize our own dysfunctions. Our systems were not resilient and extremely fragile. The message of this virus was clear, evolve or disappear. One of the main problems was due to our beliefs, our mindset. For example, remember, our economical system was based on growth, competition and opacity. As a molecular biologist who have worked in biology applied to space field, virology, neuroscience, immunology and even oceanography, with this, well, atypical and large background, I have searched and I have only identified one and only one biological system responding to these three criteria, and this is cancer. Our economical system was acting like a cancer and was leading us to extinction. Hopefully, we have been able to be conscious about it and evolve to climax, climax sorry, which is an active equilibrium, interdisciplinary cooperation and communication slash transparency. This has been possible because we have been able to reconnect ourselves with our own internal ecology, but also reconnect between discipline, started to think using ecosystemic approach and moreover being inspired by nature. We indeed realized that compared to nature, our lifetimes was ephemeral. If we compress nature lifetime into one year, January 1st, our planet Earth born, and today we are December 31st midnight, the industrial revolution occurred only two seconds ago, and our own lifetime is less than one second. Hopefully, we realized that being inspired by such huge R&D available was just pragmatic and efficient. We only need to evolve our mindset and start real interdisciplinary benevolent cooperation. Remember, at this time the gap between engineers and biologists was deep, and this gap was even deeper with molecular biologists. To illustrate this gap, just have a look to the movie Inner Life of Cells. I know, this little movie looks a little bit weird and you might think this is none of your business. However, this little film illustrates one of the processes that happen every day in all of us. Actually, inside your body, this process is ongoing. In short, 
It is a white blood cell circulating into a blood vessel. This immune cell is activated by messenger and goes from a rolling structure to a crawling structure which sneaks between the cells of our blood system to go to the place where the inflammation is. The MOBOT or multicellular soft robot is an example of what this interdisciplinary collaboration led us. It's a nova simplification of what a eukaryotic cell is. A triple membrane dot with structure corresponding to cellular receptor fulfilling different function receiver, communication, transfer, junction. Inside the cell, the cytoplasm can be a liquid or a gas, and we may also find structures similar to those found in the cells. Nucleus as an organizer with electromechanical properties, mitochondria to store energy, vacuole to store things, etc. All these elements connected using tensegrity principles, and the applications are tremendous. As a concrete example, the development of this approach let us realize new kind of tight junctions that allow mobots to communicate and transfer matter and energy. They can also do movement using morphing, crawling and rolling that allow easy access to very difficult location. And the electromechanism being protected, this allow to approach highly radioactive or dangerous area. Indeed, these individual cells can have different functionalities, like mother cells serving as a support for daughter cells and different mother cells being able to cooperate, one specialized in energy harvesting, communication, the other as a backup, etc. Last but not least, an example of this mobile let us reinvent transportation. The morphing capacity let us transport things with a high level of security. The objects and people transported is now extremely safe because completely independent of the transportation system and equipped with parachutes and life buoys. And the energy needed for transportation was reduced by an incredible factor compared to airplane. This transportation is now evolving to a multifunctional vehicle where this air vehicle can be transformed into a single stage to orbit and when reaching space evolve into a solar sail. And this also is able to transform into a falcon-like structure using syncytium principle, which is a multi-nucleus cells. And this transport is also used underwater. Okay, um, excuse me, I'm receiving an important message. Okay, there is a breaking news from the Kardashev One television. Jebedia Kerman, our official UNSA contact, sent us a photo from the Moon Village 2 base. The United Nations Space Agency, UNSA, is the new world space agency, bringing together all national space agencies as well as private actors. Indeed, NASA, ESA, JAXA, Roscosmos, but also Blue Origin, SpaceX, etc., have decided to put in common their efforts to facilitate one common goal, save life on Earth. And Jeb just sent us this beautiful image of our Earth shine to thank all of you for allowing this major prodigy that is the long-term establishment of humankind on the Moon with henceforth a second village, the first being at the South Pole. Thank you very much, Jeb. Well, this interruption is a nice introduction for the rest of this presentation. To support the implementation of regenerative ecosystem, the research made in aerospace industry with Melissa from the ESA as a seed example helped us multiply our knowledge about how ecosystems work. And by doing this, our cities here on Earth are now completely autonomous and resilient. This is a picture of Lyon, where you can recognize the building Le Crayon. This is a demonstration that collaborating interdisciplinary opened new way of thinking. It was also the demonstration that in some circumstances, one plus one equal three. All these were possible because we have been able to change our mind. As a conclusion, we were an endangered species but now we are becoming multiplanetary. Well, 
all of this may look a little bit like science fiction. However, all these innovations are possible. Thank you very much for your attention. Take care of yourself, the other and your environment.